afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Oliver Westland. I am Senior Immigration Lawyer with GSN Immigration. Um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so you can continue to watch our extremely interesting videos about UK visa and immigration advice. Now, today's topic is something slightly complicated for a change. Um, UK Expansion Worker Visa. First thing I'd like to say about this is it's a, a newish kind of visa. It's the thing that replaced what used to be called the sole representative visa, which has been, been going for years and years and years. It has some similarities, but also has some very important differences as well. The sole representative visa was a kind of visa where an overseas company, which has no commercial entity in the UK, they could send a senior employee from the overseas company to come to the UK to set up um, a commercial trading presence in the UK, hopefully make it a success and build it up, um, bring their family, potentially uh, have a route to settlement. Now, UK Expansion Worker Visa is done in a slightly different way. You have the overseas company, senior employee. Now, um, the rules have been made a bit on the tighter side, senior employee must be somebody who, who knows their stuff, good, good knowledge, good experience. In most cases, they must have had 12 months experience of working for the overseas company. But there's a few exceptions. If they earn a big salary, uh, at least about um, £74,000 a year, or if the overseas company is based in either Australia or Japan, there are a few exceptions. Usually, the, the senior employee must have been working there for 12 months, but not always. Anyway, the company decided that they would like to send a senior employee to the UK to set up the new commercial trading entity in the UK, but the rules are now different. And to be honest, the rules don't offer as much to the, um, the representative as they used to. There is no route to settlement any longer, the visa can only be held for, well, initially for one year, extended for one more year. The visa can only be held for a total of two years. It doesn't offer as much to the um, representative. <coughs> now, that's not the end of the story. The representative may be ultimately able to change to a different kind of visa where there is the possibility of an eventual settlement. But uh, I must make this very clear. The nature of this visa has changed a lot. It doesn't offer straight up the route to settlement for the, um, the representative and their family. On the plus side, whereas the, the sole representative visa, there was an English language requirement, um, UK expansion worker visa, there is none. So they, they can escape from, from that problem, but there are other issues to be sorted out. Um, now, of course, different people are different. Some people want to set up their life in the UK, some people are not bothered. Different people are different, but we do need to explain the difference in the two visas. Now, it gets relatively complicated. This is a sponsored route. Probably you've heard about sponsorship. You've heard about um, sponsor licenses, probably you may have heard of skilled workers and categories like this. There needs to be sponsorship. Sponsorship can only be achieved if the UK entity has been granted a sponsor license by the Home Office. The same thing is true for the UK expansion worker visa, but of course, it's very funny, isn't it? Because um, the, the, the UK entity doesn't really have any existence yet. You know, how can you grant, um, how can you grant a certificate of sponsorship uh, to a person who's come to the UK to work in a company in the UK? It doesn't actually exist. This is one of the, the complicated things. Uh, the Home Office have made um, a, a, a strange and interesting scheme. They say that the UK, the proposed UK entity, needs to exist about half. It needs to have a footprint. This is a word that's just been in, um, invented, I think. Footprint comes in two different ways. You can show a footprint for the UK entity either by being registered with a company's house Quite easy, probably, isn't it? It's, it's not so difficult to register a limited company. Or must show a UK premises. I think this is a bit dodgy. 
who wants to have a UK premises when you, you don't know whether the application is going to be successful? Much more sensible, I should think. Um, it, it looks as though having registration with Companies House as a limited company provides the footprint, and then when you have the footprint, the person who's applying for the visa, the, the senior employee, the representative, they have to show that the UK entity is sponsored and that it has issued a certificate of sponsorship. Now, this is a bit of a subject on its own, but um, I need to tell you some things about it. The UK entity has to apply to the Home Office for a sponsor license. In this case, it will be a UK expansion worker visa sponsor license. There are other types, of course, but in this case, it will be UK expansion worker visa sponsor license. If they get that, then the UK company can um, apply online for a certificate of sponsorship. Now, like everything else, these documents aren't particularly real. Um, they can be printed out, but they, they are virtual documents, essentially. They just exist on a computer system somewhere. The UK company, or, or the proposed UK company, can issue a certificate of sponsorship. Now, this is very funny because the UK company will actually consist mostly of the person who's coming to the UK. So it's all very strange and confusing, but somehow the Home Office I think it makes sense. The UK company can apply for a sponsor license. If successful, they can then use their sponsor license to apply for a certificate of sponsorship, which is a nice virtual document, which has a unique reference number. Then the proposed um, representative, the senior employee, can make a visa application to come to the UK to, to be the representative uh, who will set up the UK company. Now, if you think this sounds quite complicated, you're quite right. Um, I'm sure that Mr. Shaw has some questions to try and disentangle some of this stuff. Thank you so much for elaborating on this. It's so complicated, it's even hard to come up with questions on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll start with... Um... Can I just say something? Yes. I think they made it this way because they decided that it was going to be a sponsored route. Okay. That that was a decision taken up high. Mm. Having decided that, they had to find a way to make it work, which was co quite complicated. True. Great. Now, um, one of the questions that comes to mind is, if this um, worker, senior worker, comes to the UK to work for this company, um, and they find another job from perhaps another employer who might be offering them skilled worker sponsorship as well, are they allowed to switch from within the UK? Well, that's a very obscure question, Mr. Shaw. <laughs> I suppose they could. That's not the main focus, is it? Because we're, we're talking about the company that is set up in the UK, but they might be able to switch. But hopefully that's not going to happen every day. Yes, we're, yes. we're thinking our, our client is going to be the overseas company, and we hope that that's not going to happen too much. But I mean, the, the, the way that the switching rules for working visas now are very liberal. So switching of, of this kind may be very possible. Uh, in fact, there are more categories that can switch than that can't switch, and switching may be very possible. But let's hope that, that these competitors can't tempt away the overseas company senior employee who's been working for years and years and building up their experience. And let's just hope it doesn't happen too often. Yes, definitely. Um, in regards to the sponsorship license for this mm. company, mm. would I be correct in assuming that the company back home or overseas company um, would have to keep a lot of documentation from the head office to support this application? From the office of the overseas company? Yes. Yeah, like, 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 like normal. And is there any um, limit or any requirement about finances, how much money the head office may need to show that they would be investing into this new company? No, no it's, it's not that kind of um, application. They would need to show that they're investing some sort of sensible, realistic amount, depending on what the kind of business is, but there, there aren't any mathematical figures for this. It's not like um, the old-fashioned innovative visa or anything like that. It's something which is done on a reasonable, a financially reasonable basis. Okay, great. And because this visa has replaced um, the visa called Sobrep Visa, a very mm. popular and mm. long-running mm. scheme, mm. Um, one of the requirements for that one was to produce a business plan. Yes. Now, for this visa, because that company might not exist or be trading already mm. before they um, apply for no, the No, it, it can't be trading. Yes, okay, brilliant. It can't really exist uh, 
properly it can fully. sort of exist, but not half, really. It can half, half exist. Half, half exist. The, the footprint, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if this half existing company is, is about to bring in this um, employee, mm. um, would they also need to produce a business plan about the activities that, yeah. that may take place? In the yeah, the business, a proposed business plan about the way that it would work. Yeah, most definitely. Okay. And these senior employees, um, would I be correct in assuming that they can bring in their spouse and children? Well, only only family. one spouse. Yes. Yeah, well, one spouse, but no limit on the number of children. Yeah, yes. Great. And those children can go to school and the spouse could potentially work elsewhere if need be? The spouse can work wherever they want. Uh, the spouse is totally unfettered. Children can indeed go to school. In fact, I think they have to go to school, don't they, by, by, by the rules, as far as I know. Um, of course, they can send them to private school, but they could go to state schools as well. If they don't go to school at all, I think there's some, some bad legal penalty. True, that's correct. It's just not acceptable um, in, in England, is it? No. And We um, have our values in this country. You know? Fantastic. In regards to the main employee, the senior employee, the backbone of this new company, uh, well, new office in mm. the UK, mm. um, would this person be allowed to take on another job or run a side business? If um, no, not, not really, no. So they have to fully concentrate yeah, yeah, yeah. on being senior yeah, employee. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. And that's is one of the, uh, as you know, this is, um, well, you didn't know, but I'll, I'll tell you now, this is a points based system application, which doesn't mean anything particularly strongly, but you have to score points in every category. Uh, that's one of the categories for scoring points that you are not working for any, anybody else. Okay. And because there's so many other type of business related visa that exist, I would like you to clarify whether there is any sort of endorsement needed from anyone for this visa? No. Uh, the endorsement comes from the head office saying we want to do this, we want to set up this business in the UK. If the you can accept that as reasonable and sensible, then that's enough. Great. <coughs> so no third party endorsing no. would be involved? No. Okay, fantastic. And um, when it comes to um, running the business so the senior employee because <coughs> you mentioned cannot stay more than two years on this visa yes would we be correct in assuming that he or she would be required to leave the country another employee could replace them uh put it this way the obvious answer to that question the obvious route is that they could switch in country to a skilled worker visa for that Company. That's, there might be other possibilities, but that, that's the obvious uh, possibility that, that presents itself. So they might go on to a route for settlement, but of course, if they go on to skilled worker visa, they have to start from scratch on a five-year route to settle with, with any family members. Okay, so if they've spent two years already, perhaps, mm -hmm. on a senior employee visa, that time does not count no. towards settlement? No, I'm afraid not. Okay. Um, and you, I, I think you may already have mentioned there is no English re language requirement for this visa, is it? No, there isn't. That, that's true. Okay. Because the way that the Home Office have done it is a kind of a, just a very temporary visa, so, so there isn't any language influence requirement. Okay. Temporary visa, generally there isn't. All right, perfect. And um, in regards to switching into this visa, mm. um, is anyone able to switch into this visa within the UK? That is a very good question. I've been struggling with it ever since these rules were published. According to the rules, yes. I, I struggle to find a scenario because you you'd think that the person would be overseas, wouldn't you? But it, it looks like from the rules it might be possible if you can show uh, a 12 month period of employment or, or, or similar, apparently it's possible to switch in the UK. Okay, fantastic. I think in most cases it wouldn't happen, but it's not possible, yeah. All right. Brilliant. Um, thank you so much for such a detailed vlog on this new visa category, and we hope a lot of corporate um, corporations can take advantage of this along with their senior employees and establish a business in the UK and thrive. It's been my pleasure. Thank you very much. See you in the next vlog. See you next time.